Hey, what's up? This is Joe. I'm in uh, Victoria, Texas, uh, on my way to the Mexico border. I wanted to make this video to share with you the circumstances surrounding how I met Saddle Tramp. Uh, basically, Saddle Tramp is a guy that restores a lot of classic uh, Harley Davidson motorcycles in his garage in Mississippi. He's got an awesome YouTube channel. All the way from down in Mexico, I'd started to notice fueling issues. I sort of chalked a lot of this up to just a lot of bad gas until I noticed that the bike wanted to start to die uh, after it got hot and then would run again after about 30 minutes to an hour of letting it cool. I knew these symptoms from before as uh, indicative of a fuel pump going out. Basically, I limped the bike along to uh, a place called Wiggins, Mississippi, and it was there as I was waiting for my parts in the woods that I began to notice the bike was getting hard to start. And I'm thinking, yeah, this would be great uh, just getting stuck in the woods again. That's like exactly what I want, right? So I started making some calls and uh, a buddy of mine got me into contact with Saddle Tramp, who it just so happened was 30 miles down the road and uh, came back the next morning with the truck and trailer, took it down to his garage and hung out with uh, both him and his wife, Kim, who were absolutely fantastic and really went a long way towards sort of like regaining kind of a positive outlook and uh, and whatnot. Yeah, you know, it, it sucks broken down in the woods alone, but uh, if you're kind of going through it with somebody else, it just tends to make it a lot more bearable. So that being said, if you enjoy this video, please hit like and subscribe. And as always, I've included an optional donate link in the drop box if you'd like to contribute to this project. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the road. After coasting for some time relatively trouble-free, I experienced a succession of mishaps all at once. A fuel joint failure, being stuck in the woods, and getting caught in a crazy hailstorm. In spite of my problems, both me and the bike were still kicking, so I headed in a vaguely westward direction back to the Mexico border. I didn't know it then, but my losing streak was to continue as the bike began the routine of surging, dying every 30 miles, and becoming hard to start. As annoying as this all was, it was a direct result of these troubles that I met the legendary motorcycle YouTuber, Saddle Tramp. I'm uh, once again experiencing symptoms of uh bad fueling. The bike has been uh, basically dying uh, every 30 miles. If I pull off and let it rest for about 30 minutes, then it's good for another 30 miles. Since Mexico, my symptoms had slowly been creeping in. What I'd initially attributed to bad gas was now making the bike begin surging and wanting to die when hot. Mentally preparing myself to do surgery, I had the parts sent to a dollar store in Wiggins, Mississippi. It was during one of my long rest breaks that I noticed another hailstorm coming in fast. Great. I searched for the cheapest room in Mobile and headed into the ghetto. Uh, this is my beautiful uh hotel in uh, Mobile, Alabama. Found this place, it's the cheapest one on the map. They're calling for hailstorms, tornadoes, and things like that, so I'll hold up here. I'll take you on a little bit of a tour of my crib. First of all, you can see where this door's been kicked in, presumably by the police uh, at some point. That thing's broken, so. Door was completely caved in. Cigarette burns, people nod out on uh, fentanyl, opiates, and stuff like that, and pass out with their cigarette burning. Their cigarette burns the couch right there. You got that. Cigarette burns all over the comforter. Oh, here you go. Here's the uh, AC unit. It's, I don't know, somewhat functioning. The sad thing is most of the hotels that I've stayed in in Mexico are actually a lot nicer than this. They're just not neglected. Uh, in the same way. Last night, out the window, there was uh, 
some dealing going on, obviously. Older white woman uh, in the car, presumably ODing on uh, fentanyl and just completely dead to the world, just completely out of it. When I hit the road three years ago, I went to some sketchy places, but just the sheer volume that I've seen in the last couple of years, it literally just impermeates everywhere I go. As someone who's traveled extensively and seen much of the U.S., the epidemic of drug addiction is impossible to ignore. Unfortunately, this is an extremely profitable issue for Washington bureaucrats who seem to be lining their own pockets with taxpayer dollars instead of offering any real solutions. I guess it's more profitable to simply exacerbate the problem rather than try to fix it. Anyhow, I limped the poor suffering ST into the state of Mississippi. Uh, working on my video at this coffee shop back there and uh, stopped at a barbecue place over here that has pork belly. Give my bike time to cool off. I rode uh, about 37 miles without a problem, just limping it uh, over to Wiggins where uh, I should have my uh, quantum fuel systems pump and uh, hopefully take care of this freaking uh, fuel pump issue. Ooh, these are my pork belly burnt ends. Couldn't resist. White sauce, typical Alabama, Mississippi thing. Spicy sauce. Good. From Loosedale, I limped over to Wiggins to hang out while I waited for my parts. I crawled into my tent and the sun went down on Wiggins, Mississippi. Uh, well, shit. I had a tree branch uh, fall through my tent uh, last night, obviously. Slept right through it. Punctured my uh, A-frame tarp deal that I just got and the replacement tent that I just bought. So. I'm gonna get out the Gorilla Tape. I should be able to fix it. I can't uh, say that I'm too big of a, a fan of this uh, A-frame style. I'd used a heavy duty tarp for the longest time. Something like this would have just bounced right off. So, something to consider. As I hung out in the woods waiting for my parts, I noticed the bike was becoming increasingly harder to start.
not wanting to get stuck out here, I made some calls and a friend connected me with Saddle Tramp, a YouTuber with a loyal following who was seriously into bikes. As fate would have it, he was situated about 30 minutes down the road and said he'd be there in the morning with the truck and trailer. Saddle Tramp, who uh, you guys may have seen, has a YouTube channel and he just happens to be 30 miles away coming up here with the truck and trailer. I got my fuel pump and I got my filter at the Dollar General via FedEx waiting to be picked up. So I'll have uh, his garage to work out of. I don't know why, it just seems like everything's been going wrong lately. I guess that just happens sometimes uh, in life. Yeah. <laughs> so this is saddle champ a buddy of mine uh, put me in contact with him he's out here man i mean hey this is him too that's this, this is the dude what's and look, up? He's, he's filming me while i'm filming him isn't that kind of ridiculous <laughs> that's like, yeah. it that's is his, pretty ridiculous that's his audience ah. right there i don't know if you guys watch this too but uh <laughs> good to see you guys <laughs> and he lives uh like 30 30 miles away right. or something like that right. so well, I was about, like, about a half hour you know 30, man. something like that brother i was gonna have to do this in a parking lot well, when scotty called me and said that he was up here in wiggins that's like Oh shoot, that's like going next door. You okay. know? So shoot, I may take about a half an hour, but that's okay, you know, no big deal. That's awesome. mainly because of awesome, traffic, man. but uh, check this out. Who the heck breaks down on a freaking, what is it, gold wing? This does not look like it should be broke down. I mean, if anything should be broke down, it should be my stuff. Right? Old American made crap. <laughs> yeah, that's that. You gotta be hard headed to go out on the road. Anyway, so I guess the gist of the story is if you're gonna ride these things, I guess it don't matter what it is. You're gonna fix something. You're gonna fix them. Yeah. Yeah. They're straight. Oh, here's your bed. Oh, I'm just trying to keep the little thing coming off this. Yeah. Yeah, well, there she is. All strapped down and secure. Where they sell Honda parts, right? Right. All right. Right. So we're gonna go get we're gonna go get a part, get the part he needs for his motorcycle. You can buy it at any Dollar General. So get you a, right. a Honda Mini Wings. Yeah, they sell a Dollar General, a Family Dollar, and hey, if you can even find a Kmart, you might have a big too if they haven't closed their doors already, right? How well, would you describe what your channel's all about? Well, my channel is just all about whatever the heck it is I'm doing at the moment. That's that is motorcycle related. Like right now, I'm recording a video, except he's recording his part. I already did my part thus far, <laughs> right. but it's about a motorcycle traveling dude who broke down in the woods, and this is what you do. Well, you know, if, anyway, it's what that's what bros do. I hate to be cliche by saying all that, but you know, it's just you just don't leave your fellow rider stranded out in the woods if you have the means yourself to go and uh, you know go get him, especially if he's like right by the, by your house you know what i mean now if you're like say broke down up in uh, tennessee Alabama, you know or not alabama or new york i'd be like well what are you calling me for you wouldn't <laughs> get me in new york <laughs> you ain't got friends up there this is actually my first time to meet this guy i knew i already knew about him because of uh scotty you know, scooter tramp scotty i'm sure you guys watch him if you're watching his channel of course but scotty called me on the phone and says that this guy's broke down and he's near me I said, but well, where is he at? And they said, well, hold on, let me check my map. He goes, well, he's in Wiggins. I said, Wiggins? Well, shoot, that's just a half hour away. Yeah, I'll go get him, you know. So here we are, we're, you know, enjoying each other's company and uh, terrorizing the, the, the Podunkia people in yeah, right? southern Mississippi. Freaking out the normals. Yeah, freaking them out with Go <laughs> GoPro cameras and stuff, you know, and it's not the norm. This lady said, why is there filming going on? She runs the store too. So we thought, okay, let's put the camera down. Maybe she'll think we're, you know, troublemakers. And don't right, want to right. get the cops called on us. It used to be Knives and Chains bikers had. Now it's GoPros. Yeah, yeah. They're freaking was, everybody yeah, out. I was at an event somewhere, like in Tampa, over at the Shade Tree Surgeon Weirdo Camp House. Had a conversation with three people. One of them was named is Shovelhead Fedge. He has his own channel. Fedge is from the, the day, you know what I mean? One of the younger guys says, man, this is a pretty good turnout. All these bikers in one spot. And I, I got to thinking that term biker. I said that, uh, you know, I can remember a day where you can go to a rally and there'd be people walking around naked, women walking around naked to be an open orgy and debauchery and burnouts and people popping wheelies, getting drunk, drag racing, getting in fights and all that kind of stuff. 
I look around at this and said, these ain't bikers. We're all just a bunch of nerds on motorcycles <laughs> waving cameras and talking about what computer software we use to edit our videos. What the heck is a biker anyway? I, that's I, the question. That's my little rant. What is a biker? Please answer in the comments below. Oh, uh, you're gonna get answers all over the map. Yeah, little fuel filterino. Little pumperino. Hello, I'm Joe. I would shake your hand. I got gas all over me. It, it, it washes off. I'm Kim. It's Kim, nice to meet you. Nice Sorry to about meet the you. Circumstances, but when I heard him on the phone with Scotty, I thought it was going to be one of those. Oh, by the way, honey, Scotty will be here in five minutes. So I was <laughs> right. not because I'm one of these people. I don't adult well. If he says, "Hey, do you want to go for a ride?" Then I just leave it off. I have red beans and rice. Hanging out with Corey and his wife Kim sure went a long way towards getting back a sense of normalcy after the recent mishaps. She made up a bowl of delicious red beans and rice and I headed back to the garage where I worked on the pump until late into the night. When I'd replaced the fuel pump last year, I'd been on the road and neglected to clean out the reserve tank. This time, I was gonna make that thing shine. Nine, right? Right. So we're out here in Corey's garage, uh, Saddle Tramp. Uh, yeah, yeah, big deal. And uh, so, <laughs> right, right. Worked on the bike all day yesterday, getting the uh, the pump and filter replaced. Now I'm just gonna torque these uh, nuts holding this assembly in place and then see if she fires up. So what uh, sort of a project you got going on here? This is something I've been trying to resurrect from the dead for the past four years. It's a 1976. Sportster. Of course, I did what I didn't really ha have to do, which was take a perfectly good rolling chassis and make it... Basically, that's the original frame sitting over there, so there's nothing wrong with it. I just happen to have this hardtail frame. For some reason, there's something about Ironhead Sportsters, motors that is, and shovel heads. They just look like they belong. It looks like it's going 100 miles an yeah. hour sitting still. I got this from the widow of a good friend of mine who he passed away, and this was his motorcycle, and she literally gave it to me. So... It's got some sentimental sentimentalness or sentimental value to it to me, even though it's just a bike. But this thing is literally one pet cock away from firing up because I had to change gas tanks because the original gas tank it was so corroded on the inside, it's beyond salvageable. So I've stuck this ugly gas tank on here, but that's what paint is for. And, but I don't have a pet cock to that fits here. He I needs need, a 90 degree basically. Going that way, yeah going that way no other way to rig it really nah yeah, he sure. fired it up he poured a little bit of gas in the filter last night and fired it up for the first time in four years huh yeah and it ran and it sounded, sounded very, very, pretty badass very healthy yeah there's a few other things i got to do to it other than the cosmetic stuff i have a brake caliper up here but i don't have a brake uh -huh. line i have a pile of brake lines that i need to shift search through to see what i can find it'll go from the map that master cylinder to this this is something I added because I couldn't use my original oil filter. Uh -huh. It wouldn't work with this frame. So I found this setup. This pretty much replaces my left side motor mount. And it's a, wow. motor, it's a motor mount with an oil uh, spigot on the other end. Does it have like a... a yeah. Oh, it's a hose. Yeah, there's oil lines coming off the back of it. goes going through this cooler uh -huh. back to the motor, back to the uh, oil tank. Wow. And then here's a battery box that he made. That was a hardware store special, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I made it out of uh, raw materials. The, the box itself is just some angle iron that I cut up and I used the, the battery as a jig. 
and this is just a piece of flat bar where I drilled holes and I got these bolts screwed into these nuts that I welded onto the angle iron and of course the battery is held on by bolts that are going through the bottom on this part of the frame it was kind of an ordeal to make that but it was yeah. fun to do these nuts when i welded the, the nuts in uh -huh. well anytime you put uh heat to metal it's going to draw it's going to move so these nuts yeah. on the bottom weren't are not perfectly uh, horizontal they have a little bit of a tweak to them so if they're a little bit tweaked here they're gonna be way tweaked up here so when i got my measurement from center to center to the nut on the other side i did that on the strap but it turned out didn't work out so i had to take a, a round file and you know elongate these holes so that i can get it to fit and but i put some flat washers on here to hide my elongated holes mm. <laughs> so it looks like a pro did it <laughs> they're going to a funeral to pay some respect so i might ride with them for a little while down the road and make sure that the bike kind of runs idea. and then i'll probably cut out and do my own thing but can't thank you enough for having me man it's, right it's been great meeting you and talking with you well you know it's funny because like the day before i was sitting here in the garage just kind of man i wish i had somebody to talk to Bored. Here. <laughs> man <laughs> right. i'm sitting here i ain't got no, my the wife's doing her thing and i'm just just you know, know, man and then all of a sudden i get a phone call from scotty said you're broke down one, two, three, here you are. I said, wow, like, Yes, man. we got another one. <laughs> I got somebody to hang out with while I'm in the garage, man. So that's kind of cool. Working. All my friends are busy being adults. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> say goodbye to those guys uh Corey and kim were uh, absolutely first class totally humble uh, about their channel and the success of it and everything they were just so awesome in uh welcoming me into their home and uh letting me ride around and use their tools and stuff fuel pump seems to be doing okay just rode 30 miles on it so i try to make my way on some back roads to uh my spot in uh, mandyville both Corey and kim were an absolute class act Although the circumstances sucked, I considered myself very fortunate to connect with them. Sometimes just meeting the right people at the right time can have a huge positive effect on your morale. It's people like these who make the experience of breaking down suck a lot less. Here's hoping your wheels hold up, and we'll see you next time.